Hi, this is Vanessa Balisa. You're watching my knitting vlog, my knitting journal of sorts, where I share bits and pieces of what happens behind the scenes in my work as a knitwear designer. And yes, you'd be pressed to think this was meant to be a regular vlog, but it does seem that it took me two months and a half to record an episode. There are various explanations for it, but um, and no promises to change this whatsoever because the more one says one's gonna do something, the less one's able to do it. So let's just say that this pops up whenever it happens. And today I had some time. I'm home in Barcelona. We live in a very small and crowded apartment. Um, the what you have in the background is just a small piece of the mess that we live with. Uh, my partner is a singer songwriter, so there are instruments, guitars, pianos, cables and things everywhere, plus 700 kilometers of yarn, which I counted last week and I was totally scared of. So yeah. Anyway, this vlog today is to show you a new release, the Bucaria Basket, which was published this weekend. If you're watching this afterwards, this was published um, late May. And a couple of things that are currently on my needles and some new designs coming very soon. So yeah, let's move forward. So, enter the Bucaria Basket. This project is uh, published right now. It's a pattern that you can find on Ravelry, Lovecrafts, and on my website. And it was published last Friday. I'm still overwhelmed with the reception this little basket had because, I mean, it's a very, very, very successful release for my standards. And I'm so grateful that you love this one so much. Now, this is a small project. To me, <laughs> it yells summer <laughs> knitting. Um, it's a project that you can uh, work with leftovers. It uses barely more than 100, 150 grams uh, based on the size. It comes in two sizes. This is a smaller size. Um, it's knit in unspun yarn. This is Nutidem. Um, of course, you could knit it with Plotulopi or other unspun yarn. But um, I, I used Nutiden because, well, because you know how much I love my Nutiden yarn. Um, it's neat in a combination of linen and half linen stitch, which is very well thought of. The base is neat in linen stitch, which creates a very sturdy and rigid um, structure for the back. And half linen does retain some structure, but it's way more malleable. So it gives the body of the basket a certain amount of drape. Now, this is a basket, and very purposely named basket and not bag, because you can make whatever you want with it. Um, I, um, you can carry your lipstick around town, like Dorothea, my friend Dorothea, mentioned to me yesterday, or else you could just use it uh, as a project bag or as a storage solution uh, around the house. The design for it was inspired by classic straw bags, like the one I have here which are very common in Catalonia and in Spain in general and are used anywhere around the house. Um, I have a gazillion baskets in my place and I've always seen them growing up. These are traditional uh, straw baskets that you normally use for going to the market. That's where you put your grocery shopping. And they are very, um, I'd say that they are very, beautiful, but we often don't see the beauty in objects that we use on the daily. And um, I was reflecting on how pretty these baskets looked to me and how ubiquitous they were. So they were something that you didn't even think about. They were just baskets that you had in place. Um, but they are beautiful and they deserve some attention. So the more I thought about it, the more I thought I should create a design that paid homage to this everyday beauty. And then I thought of Nutiden yarn, which is just the perfect, perfect material. Uh, unspun yarn is perfect for this project. So if you're a newbie and you've never worked with unspun yarn before, this is a small project. It will take you barely a couple of, a couple of afternoons uh, to knit the small size, perhaps three or four to knit uh, the larger one. But it's just a very mindless knit. Um, although it's fun to do because um, first you work the base and then you pick up stitches around the base and you build the body until you reach the opening where you 
create an I-cord bind off, an I-cord cast on, and then yet another I-cord edging for the top part of it. Um, the pattern also includes uh, instructions for felting the base of the back and giving your um, bucadilla basket a bit more structure. So yeah, I think it's a fun, quick project. Uh, and I'm already working on a second one using Plotulopi, uh, held together with Alephos by Istex, which is a combination I already used for the Shepherdess sweater, which is the last pattern of the Nuti and Yarn Appreciation Club. I might insert a picture somewhere around the screen so you know what I'm talking about because I don't have the sample with me. Um, which just reminds me, <laughs> the Nuti and Yarn Appreciation book uh, has been shipped to club members so if you are waiting for your copy you should get it sometime soon in the mail. It might take longer if it's being sent overseas uh, because of customs and stuff but they all been sent and I'm so grateful that we managed to get this done and finish. It's a lot of work to ship so many books with just two hands and a few hours every day. So yes, success! Anyways, um, the Bucadilla basket available uh, from now on into sizes if you wish to knit it. My testers did a beautiful job and you can check their projects on Ravelry. I think they did a very, very nice array of Bucadilla baskets so you can see them work in different colors, etc. I knitted mine in a very soft beige color, which I love. Resembles the original straw baskets, but um, I think a darker color could work a bit better because this is something you, if you're gonna get this moving around the house you want it to be a bit more resistant so perhaps a darker color could work better who knows the pictures that we took um for this uh hands included belong to my dear friend laura at mimosa cafe lanar in gijon we took the pictures in the studios when i was staying there with her for a knitting retreat that we hosted a few weeks ago just actually just four weeks ago it seems ages ago it was a kneading retreat we had in the mountains and we had uh, 15 kneaders from across Spain and they just came to spend some time together. We did some kneading, of course we did. We did some walking around the mountains, not a lot. And <laughs> we just talked and talked for hours about kneading, which is the thing that we love the most. So it was great fun. Um, after the retreat, I spent some time with my friend with whom I co-hosted this uh, retreat and we managed to sneak some time to take pictures of this basket which came out lovely. I love them. So check my, check my Instagram um, page to see how they turned out, but I think they look very sweet. Um, yeah, there you have it. Book the basket. Moving on next. Um, Yes, there's so much happening. So one thing that happened is that, as you may know, I'm writing a book of patterns to be, to be published sometime this fall. Uh, we are taking pictures for the book on the 19th of June, so the date's approaching. Uh, all of the samples have been neat. We're currently testing or finishing the test for a couple of the designs that, were, uh, that are to be included in the book. And we are beginning to debate um, structure and template for it, although a lot has been done already. It's more about putting the finishing touches to the project. And I am at this point where I'm letting go control of the things that are happening because I'm sending all the material to my graphic designer with whom I have a wonderful relationship and I trust wholeheartedly. Um, and also to the photographer. So somehow it feels like the book project has ended for me. I created the designs, I wrote the patterns, I run the test. I'm happy with how it came to be. I'm happy with how the story that's being told unfolds. And it's like, that's what I have to do. That's all I have to do. Uh, all that's left is other people's jobs. So I feel a great <laughs> relief. It's been, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's been a lot of work because it's all work. Work gets done and that's it. But um, it's true that it's been a nagging, uh, <laughs> a nagging project behind my, uh, behind my, <laughs> behind my ears all day long. It's been like this 
okay, you have a book thing to do, you have a book thing to do, you have to need that project on top of the things that you normally do, publishing regular uh, patterns, independent downloads, submissions, and collaborations with uh, yarn companies. So now that this is done, it's like my brain needs a break. And although you'd be pressed to think I'm uh, a garment kneader, which I am, I found great relief in needing small things. The Bucaria basket being one of them, but also needing small projects. I loved creating sweaters and cardigans, but it's like my brain can take it right now. Um, the idea of sitting down and creating a huge big project, it's just too much. I think I need a bit of a break <laughs> and um, no wonder <laughs> there are nine designs for the book plus all the things that we've been doing over the winter so no wonder I'm a bit tired and in need of a break. So I've embraced something that I never thought I'd be embracing which is sock knitting. Yes, you heard that well, sock knitting. So <laughs> the reason for it is that um, I needed these socks. These are the Mimosa basic, uh, basic socks, basic in Spanish, um, which I created because we were actually going to go to Asturias to the knitting retreat I mentioned. This is a design by my friend Laura, and it's a very simple cuff down, I don't even know the words for it, sock knitting. Is it cuff to toe or cuff down? Anyway, catch my drift. Top down. <laughs> socks and uh, they're knit out of life in the long grass sock. This is a yarn that's been in my stash forever. I love it and it, if you look at it, it's not exactly my style. It's not something I'd be normally needing. Um, the colors, the material, not the kind of thing I normally need with or design with, but I had them in my stash and I love this yarn so much so much wanted to use it and it was like okay i'm gonna need a pair of socks so i can take them with me uh to a studios and show them to my friend who's uh going to have me <laughs> visit her and spend some time with her at her home so yeah i came up with these socks and it was such a seamless rewarding project and i suddenly thought wow sock knitting is fun <laughs> now i get it it's quick it's portable, it's fun, it's very practical. You could need a gazillion socks and never have enough. Okay, now I get it. So I decided to begin <laughs> sock knitting and that's what I've been doing these past few weeks. I've been creating <laughs> more, uh, a few samples and creating some socks uh, based on ideas I've had in my mind for a long time for middens or shawls. It's like I've been recycling all those ideas that I had in my head to create small accessories and turn them into socks. And a lot of them work very well. So expect to see a lot of sock designs from me very soon. <laughs> okay, so let me show you some of them. Uh, okay, so sorry for the Sorry for the gap. Anyways, uh, so one thing I do is that I write the patterns beforehand and then I knit. I grade my patterns, write the full instructions, think about the structure and everything, and then move on to the kneading part of the creative process. But uh, for socks, I've done something I never normally do, which is I just cast on and see where things take me. This is so liberating for me at this time. I still feel more comfortable with my usual way of doing things, but for sock knitting, this is being great fun and I'm enjoying it greatly, so hooray for that. Now, this pair of strawberry <laughs> socks, um, they will not be published as they are. I have to redo some bits of the design and think about it again, but uh, let's see, can you see this? Uh, 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 uh. I don't know, I hope you can see this. Yes, I think you can see it now. Now, this is uh, neat in Isager's Highland, which is not a sock yarn, because it's one of the things I love about uh, sock knitting is that you don't have to do it with sock yarn if you don't want to. Worked at a tight gauge 
you can achieve wonderful results. Um, and so, yes, this is made out of Isager Highlands, 100% wool, um, a very beautiful wool, lovely colors, and um, it's made using uh, helical stripes. And as I worked on it, I decided I'd be casting on for a different option. This is the same sock with a different heel. This is an afterthought heel. And I'm thinking the pattern might include options for both, for a heel flap and, there I am, for a heel flap and an afterthought heel. I have to think about this, and this is needing Mondim. <laughs> it's crazy colors, I know, but that's what I had lying around, so uh, that's what I took. But anyway, yeah, this fun socks, I'll be working on them this summer, thinking about what to do, and yeah, refining the pattern might be published perhaps before the end of the summer. We'll see how it goes. But that, those were fun. Those were fun to do. I have no name for them. I'm inclined to call them sorbet, sherbet or something like that. But they're so sweet. I like them a lot. I'm looking forward to fine-tuning the pattern and coming up with a plan for it. Now, another pair of socks I've been designing. This. Now, I don't like my yarn choice for it. Um, I mean, I like the yarn, but I don't like the colors. So I'll be changing this as well. I'm just showing you drafts. This is very unlike me. I never show my drafts. I only show the finish base. But there you go. <laughs> Bonus for watching my YouTube vlog. So these are the Somiedo socks. Somiedo is the place where we hosted our Niti retreat. I wanted to pay homage to it somehow. So there you have it. Um, it's a simple, fair isle, stranded, sort of, I think, a little number. I don't, didn't want to have a long leg for them, because I wanted the colors to show if you were wearing ankle jeans, which is what I, um, ankle cut jeans, which is what I normally wear. Um, and I have to change the colors for it. Uh, I, I'm thinking perhaps the main color should have a bit more of a, I don't know, some sort of marled thing or perhaps hints of different colors not so much of a block of color but i like this a lot and i'm thinking this could potentially be a very beautiful pair of socks so i'll also be working on a second final sample for this during the summer and finally on sock knitting a pattern that will be published in june now, if you're familiar with my Marta Vini, it's one of my most successful designs. It's a simple but kind of clever, if I may say so, <laughs> pattern for needing a one-by-one -one twisted rib uh, beanie. I like that design a lot and it looks simple but it's not simple. And it's one of my most worn pieces. So I wanted to create a pair of socks that followed a similar route. And these are them, the Marta socks. These are neat in twisted ribbing with a picket. Can you see the picket? Uh, 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 there you go. A picket edging. Oh, this needs some blocking, huh? This needs some blocking. But anyway, a picket edging, twisted rib, a short row heel. These are neat in La Vienne Mes sock, which is the original yarn for the uh, Marta Vini. It's got some glitter in the toe because, of course, glitter, fun. Anyway, <laughs> this is uh, La Belle Epoque, which might be my favorite color from all of La Vienne Mes. Uh, beautiful, beautiful colorway. So there you have it. This is coming out in June. It's, a, it's also thought of a summer needing. I thought of the kind of project you take to the beach. Or to the forest if that's your thing. Um, mindless kneading, beautiful yarn to make a basic but lovely pair of socks. I think they have a very good fit because of the twisted ribbing but also because of the way the short row heel is shaped and I think yeah I'm very I'm very happy with this pattern. Looking forward to publishing it very soon hopefully in a couple of weeks after this goes live. And now, a couple of weeks I have 
uh, on my needles right now. Uh, yes, on sock knitting. This is a Bully Moots uh, natural sock with which I created my Rufus shawl and Rufus sock because um, I was commissioned to create an advent calendar pattern for Emma Robinson at Bully Moots Fiber. Um, that was that was two, three years ago, and um, I love that yarn, so I wanted to have more of it in my stash, and I ordered some from her, and I'll be working on something with this funky, beautiful, orangey copper color. Don't know what yet, but I have a rough idea of what I want to do. And also, from her, this yarn, this is... Hearth. Hearth is one of her bases. She has her Hearth sock. Oops. Oopsie, oopsie. Anyways, this is the Hearth sock from her. Um, it's a sock yarn um, and it's made out of 50% jackal and 50% blue face laced uh, uh, wool. It's a beautiful yarn. And now she's gonna have the same yarn in a DK weight. And I'm creating a shawl uh, with this yarn. A beautiful rustic a huge <laughs> shawl for the summer and this will be published sometime July if we make it hopefully 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 we'll be able to um, make it on time if not it will have to be August but anyway this is soon on my needles I don't want to show you what I'm doing because some of the swatches are still a bit wonky but you'll see a lot of it on my Instagram in the forthcoming weeks because it's gonna be fun. And finally, oh yes, these are, this is a guardamores. This is a um, line and back that I created with my friend Claudia. Um, they are meant to store your kneading projects uh, when they are done. Your sweaters, your beautiful hand knit sweaters. They are, they have some natural cedar rings for um, repelling moths and they are made out of organic linen and they are so beautiful. Uh, I brought a new batch of these bags that I designed and that my friend uh, Hansu um, to the shop a couple of weeks ago and they sold out like in 24 hours. But I'm gonna have some more coming. My friend Claudia is <laughs> working, working her new machine off and we'll be having some more of this guardamores very soon in the shop. Um, so yeah, I'll be announcing that on Instagram whenever they come in. I love them and I use them as project bags because honestly, they are very sweet to the touch. I think they have an open, they are not meant for as project bags, huh? by no means, but I can you see that? It's a large opening and it's just very comfortable to knit from them. Um, inside, there are another pair of socks, and I promise this is the last sock I'm going to be showing you today. Yeah? <laughs> Can you recognize this pattern? Okay. Oh my goodness. I'm the clumsiest with the camera. Can you recognize this? Yay, yay. These are a pair of Stanley socks. Because uh, the Stanley Sleepover and the Stanley Cardigan must be one of my favorite designs ever. Um, this is a classic stitch pattern. I did not I did not design this. Um, this is a classic stitch pattern. Um, mostly used for men's clothing. Um, I don't believe in gender clothing so I reclaim this beautiful lozenge. I don't know what they are called in English. Anyway, yeah, I like them a lot. So if you've seen the stainless loop over and the Stanley cardigan you probably recognize the stitch pattern. Uh, and I'm working on a pair of socks with the original yarn. This is Rauwerk's Sport Weight, which was originally used. This is Bavaria and Merino. This was originally used for sock knitting. So, um, work at a very tight gauge. You get a beautiful, elastic, stretchy, stretchy fabric. It's fantastic yarn for sock knitting. I'm so happy that I had the idea of coming of knitting socks with it and. Um, yeah, I don't it's got such a beautiful stretch. Can you see this? I mean, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna love this sock so much. I can, 
I can already see this. Um, so yes, this is coming soon. Um, I think it will be fun, a fun sock to knit. I'm having a lot of fun working on them. Still have to decide what to do with the heel, but I have a rough, a rough idea of what I want to do. Anyway, so this is it for today. I have so much more on my needles, but I wanted to keep these videos as short as possible. I don't like very long podcasts, so I'll try to keep those around the 20-30 minutes episodes and see how it goes. Before we leave, I wanted to recommend a book because it's something I enjoy doing. You know, I'm a big reader. Uh, I love uh, talking about books and writing about books. It's one of the things I do on the side. I've been a literary critic for magazines and newspapers in Spain for many years and it's something that I still do. So. Reading is a big part of my life. I want it to be part of this uh, knitting blog. And here's a recommendation. Now, this is probably my favorite book ever. That's a big thing to say about a book, huh? Anyway, this is the book that I've gifted more times. If that, that sounds perhaps a little better. This is Ex Libris by Anne Fadiman. This was a very popular book when it was published in, dear lord, in, in when? In, in a long time, my goodness, I don't even remember when was this published. That's, this was published many years ago. <laughs> it's one of those books that you think was published 10 years ago and then it turns out it was 20 years ago. Yes, in 19, <laughs> oh my goodness, 1998! <laughs> well, yes, so, 1998, and I've loved this book so much ever since. In fact, this is my boyfriend's copy because I gifted him this copy. And um, so this is a book about the joy of reading, but also humor and funny remarks about how readers look at things in life. I think when you are a reader, things that happen around you sometimes get confused with fiction. And you look at things as if, you look at people as if they were literary characters. You look at scenes as if they were <laughs> scenes in a novel. And I like it, but I understand it's not for everybody. But anyway, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful book on the joys of reading and being a reader. So beautiful short essays. They read fast. Smile on your face before you go to bed. Definitely a thumbs up for Anne Fadiman. There's a second part to this book, which is called At Large and Small. It's a second collection of the same kind of essays. I might love it even more, but Ex Libris is the original one. There you have it. Beautiful books. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this vlog on my... <laughs> on sock knitting, it seems. And um, I hope to be able to record a new vlog soon, but who knows if that might end up happening soon or in three months. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, uh, let me know. If you didn't like it, don't tell me. I take criticism very personally. No, don't worry. <laughs> Do tell me. Do tell me. But um, yeah, I hope you like this short videos. And any feedback is very welcome. So, yes. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you liked it. And happy knitting.